President Gary White. Thank you, Jerry, and welcome. I'm going to uh, need the microphone. Is that better? Okay. Welcome to Marshall University and Foundation Hall. What a lovely facility. I don't know, i point out an architectural feature that is not always evident to our visitors. But if you saw the movie We Are Marshall, you recall the scene uh, when the Board of, of Governors was meeting and Nate Ruffin came in from the back of the room uh, very concerned about the decision that was about to be made to eliminate our football program. And if you remember in that scene, they walked over to the window and looked down at all the students that were gathered on the lawn below the Morrow lab Library facility. I would point out to you that these upper windows all across the architecture of this facility are the same architecture that you saw in that movie and you, you see in the old Moore Library here on campus. So this is a great facility. We're uh, very pleased to have it. It's heavily utilized by the university and the, and the community. Also, let me say that I am here today in this capacity because of the loss of a great leader of Marcy University and a very dear personal friend to Joanne and myself, and that was Stephen Kopp. Dr. Kopp had a, a great vision for Marcy University and worked tirelessly to bring that vision to fruition. And we, are, we were, of course, very saddened with his loss, but we're committed to keeping his legacy and his dream alive and moving Marshall forward. Today, I thought I would address uh, two issues that I believe are important for the dialogue in the connection of education and jobs in our future. First of all, the face of higher education is changing. It has changed already. I believe it will change even more in the next three to five years. The challenges facing higher education, and by the way, it doesn't matter if we're having this conversation in Huntington, West Virginia, whereas I did just about 10 days ago, have this conversation with the presidents of the universities that are members of the Conference USA. We were meeting in Dallas, Texas, and as we flew into Dallas, construction cranes everywhere, just a, a vibrant economy, a place that's truly alive, and yet, as we sat as presidents on Sunday evening and had dinner, the discussion surrounded how they were dealing with a different financial model, the cuts that have come in higher education, the reduction of funding, the change of the face of higher education is on the agenda. And three of those presidents are institutions in Texas, in the state of Texas. So it's not just about West Virginia. It's not just about an individual economy in an individual state. It's about higher education in general. And that discussion and those changes causes us to have challenges that I've really summed up in, in, in four, uh, four descriptive words or phrases, if you will. First of all, we have a challenge to maintain financial viability, notwithstanding loss of state support, notwithstanding a change in our federal government as to how federal dollars flow into educational institutions, we have an obligation. And I believe that Marshall uh, has stepped up to the plate and done what was necessary and will continue to do what's necessary to maintain our financial viability. Because the changes that are coming are going to come to those who are in the strongest financial position to be able to step in and help 
as others may not be able uh, to do so. We also have the programmatic challenge of a major shift in what higher education is looked to to provide uh, to our students and to our economy. And we have to maintain viability. We have to have a curriculum offering that means something, that is of value, but we also have to have flexibility. And certainly in my 35 plus years in being associated with higher education, I don't think any of us could say that we've always had flexibility in higher education. Higher education has typically been, if anything, inflexible. This is the way we've always done it. We need to continue to do it that way. I can tell you here at Marshall University that attitude has changed and is changing, starting with initiatives that Dr. Kopp put in place and continuing with initiatives we have today. A huge issue and a huge challenge because of the above uh, for higher education is affordability. I read an article just a week or 10 days ago in the Wall Street Journal talking about housing starts in the United States and how all other indicators would say they should be picking up and we should be moving toward a more normal housing industry in the United States. However, that is not occurring at the rate that experts believe it should, and the article suggested that one of the reasons is that the generation that is now positioned and ready to purchase, their make their first major purchase of a home, are saddled with student debt to the point that not only can they not afford that home, but they are not, as those of us who are involved in the banking industry know, they are not bankable for that financing because their cash flow will not support their student debt and their housing debt. So affordability is a major issue. And today, as I address uh, now my third orientation session this week for new students to Marshall University, I can tell you that our students coming primarily from southern West Virginia, $200 is a major number to a family today. When it's, when it's time to sit down at the dinner table and decide where your child is going to school and what's the best investment, where can you get the best return for your dollars, uh, $200, $300 makes a major difference. So affordability is a major issue and we have to be ever vigilant. And I appreciate the Board of Governors at Marcy University. Several of the members are here today. I appreciate the position that they have taken forcing the administration of this university to really turn this place upside down and find efficiencies so that we can continue to offer the education that our students are looking for at a price that is affordable. And next week, when we present our budget to our Board of Governors, uh, I, think, I think you will join me in saying that our folks have done an excellent job and the outcome uh, will be continued affordability for our students. And finally, we have a challenge of accountability. You know, it's nice to stand here and say we've made all this progress and we've made these changes. But having a business background, unless you can, as we all know, what gets measured gets managed. I was talking on the airplane Monday night, Tuesday night, going up to D.C. with our coaching staff. And they said, you know, athletics succeeds because we keep score. Well, in higher education, we have to keep score. We have to have objective, reasonable benchmarks for each of our programs, and we have to evaluate those as, as time goes on so that we can make good strategic decisions no different than what all of us in this room who've had a career in business uh, have been used to. In terms of taking higher education and connecting education to jobs in our future, I think first and foremost, 
as Mayor Williams has said, the partnership that's created, has been created between Marshall and the city of Huntington is an example for, for every institution and every city or community to emulate. Marshall University has made financial investment when it was time for a new uh, art center. We looked to downtown Huntington, looked at what Dr. Tuma and his family have done in the revitalization of downtown Huntington. And in the midst of that, in the midst of that was a great facility that could be renovated and provide an exceptional educational opportunity for our students. And the art center was created. And very, very soon after I came to this job, we had an accreditation team here looking at that program. And among the things they talked about was the enthusiasm of our students because they were in that new setting. If you haven't seen it, it's worth, it's worth a trip downtown to see that facility and imagine an art, a student in the arts there in that setting being able to really develop the talents that they have. In addition to the partnership we have with the development of the city, we're directly involved in initiatives that the city has to take advantage of the opportunities that the mayor believes, and I certainly agree, Huntington is well positioned to take advantage of. Number one, as the market permits, we're going to have opportunities in this state for secondary products from our Marcellus gas development, the polymer industry. West Virginia and Huntington, West Virginia, has a homegrown business here that has already proven that the polymer business and the byproducts developed from that can be viable, and Marshall University is partnering with the state of West Virginia, with the city of Huntington, the state of West Virginia, and also private industry to create an incubator, if you will, to provide for professional training and develop that. Because if you think about the logistics, right down the Ohio River, either by water or by rail, those products can move to Huntington. Those raw materials can move to Huntington and be developed here and it can be a new and very viable industry for the state. We have to remove the barriers that exist to entry in this new world of education and new world of students that need to be educated. We have to look at our class offerings. We have to be flexible. We have to schedule when the need is there at Marshall University, not unlike other universities, but at Marshall University, we're making a major effort on e-course offerings, the non-traditional classroom, if you will, because the students of today are not what any of us at our ages would consider traditional students. These are students who are working, who have families, who have other obligations and need that flexibility, and we have to do that. We have to remove the financial barriers. At Marshall, we're, we're announcing a new initiative by our foundation to raise money for scholarship. Because it's not just about providing scholarships to get students here to Marshall to help them be able to afford to come to Marshall. But it's also about retention. Because we believe that we, we lose a number of our students along the way because they hit a financial barrier and, and we're not even aware of it. And if we are aware of it, we're not currently organized and funded in that regard so that we can help eliminate those financial barriers or roadblocks. So we have a new initiative from the foundation that will give us the funds that we need to do that. And we're also having a new initiative uh, started with our alumni. Simply saying to our alumni, look, you have an obligation to give back to Marshall University so that a student of tomorrow ha can have the experience that you had yesterday. 
and we believe those initiatives will remove those financial barriers. We've got to create pathways. We're actively working, and one of the things that I'm doing is I'm meeting with, with two and four year institutions all across our service area, starting to talk about how we can make close, closer linkages. If the point of entry is a community college, chances are some of those students are going to the community college because they don't believe they can compete at a four-year institution. But when they get there, they find out they can. We want to make a natural and easy pathway for that student to come to Marshall University and, and get a four-year uh, diploma once they've completed their work at the community college. We also have to create pathways from business and industry to make it easier for the services that we can provide to be available to the employees of business and industry that we serve. We have to provide a solid foundation, educational foundation in STEM. And I'm pleased to tell you that I believe, I believe the first place, the first the first time I heard STEM used in the context that it's widely used now was Dr. Stan Maynard in our conversation with the Harless Center for Rural Education here at Marshall University. So Marshall's been on the leading edge of that curve and will continue to be a leader in STEM education, but we have to do that if we're going to serve the businesses and industry and make the connection that we're here to talk about today. We have to provide meaningful and usable research that can be translated then into economic development, into business development. We, we were privileged at the Huntington Chamber of Commerce to hear from Marty Becker. And most of us in this room know Marty very well, and he's had a wonderful experience, an international experience in business. And Marty, being from Huntington, came back to observe that he thought Mar that Huntington and Marshall University was well poised to, um, to move forward, as we have described, but suggested that we need carbon research, we need polymer research, we need a research base here from which to grow these initiatives. So in summary, I would say, that Marshall University is working to meet the challenges of higher education, and we believe in doing so that we can create that connection, and if we follow the outline that I've suggested and that we've worked on internally, we believe we will be successful, and Marshall University will be very proud to be a part of not only what's going to happen in Huntington, West Virginia, under the leadership of Mayor Williams, and with our cooperation, but what's going to happen to a changing economy in the state of West Virginia and position us for the future. Thank you very much.